Today, we're talking about my journey to film my deepest shipwreck yet, the Pier Marquette 18 car ferry in Lake Michigan. I started by towing my boat from Muskegon, Michigan through Chicago, which was an absolute nightmare, and up to Port Washington, Wisconsin, where I headed 22 miles offshore in an attempt to film the Pier Marquette 18. The massive railroad car ferry was discovered in 2010 by renowned shipwreck hunting team Ken Merriman and Jerry Eliason in nearly 500 feet of cold, fresh water. It was late November 2021 when I made my first attempt to film the wreck, which lies impaled into the bottom at about a 30 degree angle. Sea conditions were very rough this far offshore and made it difficult to do much. I readied my Blue Eye Robotics ROV and sent it down. It took nearly nine minutes to cover the distance from the surface to the bottom. Suddenly, my lights start reflecting off the bottom as it comes into view. I slowly orient myself and carefully look around to see if I'm near the wreck. I'm not. I start doing gradual arcs to try locating debris or any signs that I'm near the wreck. I come across a very disturbed clay bottom which gives me hope that I'm close to the wreck. It's absolutely pitch black at these depths and the sight distance is limited to about 15 feet in the open water as there's nothing to reflect the light back. I search the bottom for 20 minutes with no luck and decide to bring the ROV back to the surface due to the wave conditions worsening. It sucks, but this was literally a shot in the dark. I thought about every detail of what had just transpired and the problems I faced on the six hour drive home because that was a very expensive boat ride just to be unsuccessful. Now fast forward to September 2022, 112 years after the ship went down. I had assembled a small team of experts and shipwreck enthusiasts to join on my next trip out to assist. Brendan Balin, Caitlin Zant, and Bob Jake. So the solution to the problem was really quite simple. I would hover over the wreck just as before, and I would verify the target on the sonar, but this time I brought 30 pounds of anchors and 500 feet of yellow poly line. So what I did was lower the anchors and line all the way down to the bottom until I hit it, and then pulled it up just a few feet, tied it off. This gives me a visual reference from the boat all the way to the bottom and allows me to be directly on target. As I neared the bottom for the second attempt, I saw the anchors come into view, but no shipwreck. I slowly turned to the right to look. No shipwreck over there. I slowly turned back and looked to the left. And BAM! Shipwreck only five feet away at most. The starboard hull and railings of the PM-18 come into view. I cautiously follow the hull and lake bed back to where the wreck is embedded into the bottom. Chaos slowly appears before me with the pilot house misplaced and actually resting on the back of the wreck, facing backwards, instead of being on the front, facing forward. The main hazard here is snagging my tether on something sharp or grabby and losing my remote operated vehicle. At this depth, there's very little chance of a recovery. I spend a few minutes exploring at the stern, being very cautious and not getting too brave with my rig, then turn around to head towards the bow. Nearly everywhere I look is destruction, and it's quite difficult in the dark to make out what used to be. The crumpled bow, heavily creased where the pilot house used to sit, is seen here, and it shows the violent impact the ship must have faced as it sank. In fact, the ship impacted the bottom so hard and fast that the bow is still sticking skyward, with 50 feet of water under it. We see a skylight and a stairwell into the bow in this view and also how the deck has been ripped backwards from its original position with the anchor capstan slightly dislodged. As I go over the railing on the bow, I head down to get a view of the anchors, still in place, and face this behemoth straight on. It's quite the view. Heading back up, we can see how misshapen the bow is and how it's crushed inward, making it look like a canoe almost. This ship was built in 1902 at a length of 338 feet and a beam of 56 feet. On its last voyage from Ludington, Michigan to Milwaukee, Wisconsin, it was carrying 29 rail cars and 62 passengers and crew. On the port or left side of the wreck, 
we see lifeboat davits and the roof over the walkway where the lifeboats would have sat. We will unfortunately be seeing this davit again soon. The extreme angle the wreck sits at can clearly be seen here as I look straight onto the side. Lifeboat cradles are visible on the top of the roof. The Pier Marquette 18 was a passenger and freight ship with 50 staterooms for traveling guests and enough space for 30 rail cars. I see my strobe lights on the opposite side of the ship, indicating that I'm directly across from where I came down. This helps paint a mental image of where I am as the darkness makes it very difficult to keep track when you can only see a little bit of the ship at a time. Here is another lifeboat davit that I would unfortunately be seeing again shortly. We're now at the bottom of the lake where the stern of the ship is deeply embedded. We can see the very disturbed clay from the impact, almost like an asteroid hit the area. The busted stern of the PM18 surely still holds many rail cars, as only 13 of the 29 were reportedly jettisoned in an attempt to lighten the load as the ship was taking on water. It's difficult to make out the situation here where the stern terminates deeply into the bottom, but with a very low battery on the ROV, I decide not to risk going into the mess and return towards my strobe lights and downline to begin my ascent to the surface. With strobe lights in view, Brendan started taking in slack in the tether as I started coming up, until he felt resistance, and saw that it was still going straight down, which is never a good thing. I turned to catch a glimpse of my thin yellow tether, which is slightly positively buoyant by design, and should be floating in the clear above me. We see that it's gently around a lifeboat davit from earlier. This one was just slightly resting against it, so it's not a big deal. I face the tether and start backing up as Brandon pulls it tight to remove all slack. Then I maneuver to the right to clear the tether from the davit that's encrusted with razor-sharp quagga muscles. The tether was free of this entanglement, but actually went down deeper instead of up towards the surface like it should. With a very low battery, I unfortunately descended back towards the bottom to see what the next issue was. My legs and hands were actually trembling and my heart was pounding. The ROV costs around $16,000 and it's not something I want to buy again in the event of a loss or entanglement with a deep wreck. I was down to only minutes of battery power at the most, so I position the ROV and start trying to tension the line and drive it out from under the obstacle. On the ROV, I do have a camera that can pan up and down, and this footage is just from the GoPro, so we're not able to see clearly the work that I'm doing to free the tether. Everything happens slowly underwater, but we manage to free the tether without cutting it in half from the sharp muscles, which can only be attributed to luck. With 0% battery life left, I start immediately towards the surface, trying to get clear of the wreck. The unit dies shortly after the mighty ship disappears from view, and we haul it in by hand the rest of the way until it's safely back on board. Alright guys, so I just brought the ROV back up from the Pier Marquette 18. Uh, mission success. Uh, my hands are still shaking a little bit. They're uh, pulling in the line, so we had the drop uh, line straight down to the shipwreck, came down right beside it. So things worked out perfectly. We had about an hour on the wreck. Um, checking everything out we pretty much toured the entire shipwreck I'm very happy that we're back safely although we had two tangles on some davits goal four of four complete for the year so thanks guys see ya if you like this kind of content consider becoming a subscriber over on my Facebook page blue eyes below for exclusive behind the scenes content or consider buying a sticker pack over on my Facebook store, which helps fund future adventures and videos like this. Thanks for tuning in and joining me on this adventure.